Hi everybody, welcome to the Doma Cupping Lab. If you're joining us today, it's likely that you've already purchased the 2023 limited edition release of our Gesha coffee. It's a really special release for us for many reasons. First of all, the coffee inside is incredible. The can wrap has been lovingly and painstakingly painted by local artist Jeff Weir. And we're just so excited to be brewing this coffee with you today. We're going to be brewing in three different ways. We're going to start with the origami, then we'll move to the Kalita 185, and then we'll end with a classic, the Chemex. Each brewing method is going to bring out a little bit of different nuance, different flavors, different body and mouthfeel. So we're going to brew three ways, and let's go ahead and get started. So we're gonna go ahead and get started with the origami. For this brew method, we're going to use a one to 16 ratio we're going to use a pretty fine grind size because you'll notice that this brew method has only one large hole so we have to restrict the flow using grind size. I'm really excited to open this coffee. You guys, I wish we had smell of vision but we don't so go ahead and open your can now. So for the origami we're going to start by putting in our filter. You'll notice that I've folded along the seam for our filter. That's with most cone brewing options is the filters need to be folded along that seam. We've had our water holding at 209 degrees. We're going to fully wash that filter. Washing the filter gets out any paper taste. This also warms up the brewing vessel. Now with that water, we're just going to discard it. And what I have here is 20 grams of our Gesha ground fine. We need to grind this coffee pretty fine, again, for this brew method. So coffee in, we'll make a nice level brew bed. So our water is at now 207. We're going to start our bloom pour by adding just a little bit of water and slowly adding up to 50 grams. We're going to let that bloom for about 30 seconds. Once we hit that 30 second mark, we're going to start our next pour. You notice I'm using a very skinny stream of water. I'm controlling the flow of water into the vessel as much as I can. We don't want a whole lot of agitation with this brew method. I'm just gonna go ahead and pour like this pretty consistently until we get to about 320 grams of water weight. What our goal here is to reach 320 grams of water weight before we hit three minutes and 30 seconds. We will let this drip. It will take just a few more seconds. And now we'll remove. Discard that filter. We'll want to stir and serve. So this brewing method is going to bring out a lot of floral notes from this coffee. It's going to bring out some of the bright sparkling acidity. It's going to be a very clean tasting cup. I'm not going to get a ton of body out of this brew method. It's going to be smooth, it's going to be sweet, it's going to be really, really nice. And now we're going to go ahead and brew with our Kalita 185. Uh, you'll notice that with this brew method, we have three small holes in the bottom as opposed to that one larger hole. Again, we're going to be using essentially the same recipe, but manipulating grind and time. So grind size and time to affect the brew. I love this brew method because of the mouthfeel and body that it's going to give to this gentle coffee. Gesha tends to be tea-like, sweet. I call it a gentle coffee. This brew method brings out more of the mouthfeel and viscosity than the previous brew method, than the origami. Through this brew method, we're going to get not just tea-like qualities, but some flavors of black tea. We need a much more coarse grind. The 
grind for this is going to be more coarse because the brewing vessel itself is acting as a restrictor for the coffee. So we're using 35 grams of coffee. We're going to start with that same bloom pour. Just about 50 grams. And we're gonna let this bloom for 30 seconds. Now we're going to start our first pour. For this coffee and this brew method, I've been doing just about two pours. Get the water in and let it filter through slowly on its own. So my first pour is gonna bring me up to about 215 grams. And you can see that the vessel itself is what's restricting the flow. So I found that this brew method is super consistent with this coffee. As long as you follow the parameters, I haven't gotten a bad brew off of the Kalita. That's due in part because the brewer is doing most of the work for you. All right, and here's our last pour. This is going to bring us up to our water weight of 560. This brew is gonna finish right about four minutes. Go ahead and discard your filter. Give it a good stir. And serve. And finally, we're going to be brewing with the Chemex. I call this the party brew method. We're going to be able to brew a lot of coffee. If you're ordering a special coffee like this, you might want to share it with a lot of people. So this might be your best bet for that. So with these extra thick filters, especially with this one, which is an unbleached paper filter, we're going to use a lot of hot water to wash this down. These filters can hold a lot of papery flavors and we really don't want that papery smell or any sort of papery flavor getting into our incredible coffee. All right, once we've washed our filter, and we've dumped that excess water, we're going to add 45 grams of pretty coarse ground coffee. Even though the Chemex has one big hole in it, the filter really restricts a lot of the flow of water. So for this brew method, we need a much coarser grind. So like with both of our other brew methods, we're going to start with a bloom pour. This time our bloom pour is going to be about 100 grams. And we're gonna let this one brew for about 45 seconds before we add our next water wave. Then we'll start adding our water in stages. This brew method does take quite a bit longer than the previous two, and that's in part because we're brewing a lot more coffee. I like to call the Chemex the party brewer, because we're brewing for a party. You notice your brew starting to slow down. You can pick up the filter and readjust it. The Chemex can sometimes create a vacuum lock. It just needs a little bit of airflow to get going again. You can anticipate this brew taking between five and a half and six minutes. And once that coffee is done brewing, remove your filter, give the coffee a good stir, and serve yourself and a friend. Cheers. Well, everybody, thanks for joining us on this Gesha brewing journey. Hope you learned something. Um, hope you found a brew method that you really enjoy. I encourage you to try all three. I think the origami is probably my favorite, but email us, let us know what you think. Email web at domacoffee.com if you want to share your thoughts, or if you want to talk about other brewing recipes, go ahead and give us a call or an email then too. You have a great day and enjoy the Gesha.